without further ado, Scott. Thank you. Morning, everybody. I was asked today to come and speak about the Crossroads specific plan. It's a new specific plan in the city. Um, the specific plan came up. Uh, came about as part of the city's general plan update. Um, the city had a general plan um, that dated back from 1987. Uh, the state guideline is to um, modify or update your general plan every 10 years. So we were a bit behind, um, but we started that update process three years ago. One of the key aspects of that general plan update was that the community of Temple City wanted to make sure that we were going to protect the single-family neighborhoods. We weren't going to upstone single-family neighborhoods. We were going to keep them safe from development. But then we wanted to focus development in certain areas. So focus it away from the single-family neighborhoods and focus them into key areas. Um, and that with that growth, we should see some community benefits that occur. And so that was the genesis of this specific plan was to take that focus growth and move it into this specific plan area. The Crossroads specific plan, the name comes from the idea that the intersection of Rosemead and Las Tunas is really at the crossroads of this West San Gabriel Valley. It's about halfway between the 210 and the 10 freeway. It's about halfway between the 605 and where the 710 was once planned. So it's about um, as cro crossroads as you can get. Um, but also, Temple City is in the middle of um, a cultural crossroads, where we're seeing demographic changes, we're seeing a cultural exchange occur. And so we wanted a specific plan that would recognize those two things. What is a specific plan, first of all? A specific plan you'll hear a lot about um, from planners, and probably nobody else, because no one else knows what it means. Um, a specific plan takes and creates uh, a plan for a sub-area of a city. So it's not going to give you a plan for the whole area of a city, just a small portion of it. And one of the general principles is to create within that area a unified or cohesive vision for that, for that sub-area. It is essentially a hybrid, um, a, a combination of, of a general plan and a zoning code all at the same time. And so you'll see within this specific plan and other specific plans, sets of goals and policies as you would find in a general plan, but it also includes maps. It has development standards like your zoning code would, so it talks about what the heights would be and the setbacks and your FAR and your lot coverage. It also um, many times will include a set of design guidelines, and then it will also have implementation measures. How are we going to move this plan forward so it's just not a whole bunch of money given to consultants and then a document sits on the shelf. So with the crossroads specific plan, we, one of the first steps is to look at what is existing in the area. And our crossroads specific plan, just to go back to the boundaries really quick, it focuses at the intersection of Las Tunas and Rosemead. It goes up to the next street to the north, which is Hermosa, and goes down to the uh, Eaton Wash on the south. Um, to the west, you have Muscatel, and to the east, you have Sultana. So that's approximately the boundaries of the specific plan. Within that area, um, the, the main site within the specific plan is, this, is what's called, what we call um, Site 5. It's the west side of Rosemead Boulevard between Las Tunas and um, Broadway. Uh, that block, you see large underutilized parking lots. Um, you have embattled retailers like Kmart, um, which are probably not long for, the, for, for much in the future. Um, you have an, an office store, and we've seen Staples and Office Max and Office Depot struggling as well. Um, so we have some embattled retailers on that site. You don't have within that area a, a sense of cohesion. On one side of Rosemead, you have one very different look than on the other side of Rosemead. Um, and then it's very auto-oriented. Um, you have these very large blocks that run all the way from Las Tunas down to Broadway. It's dominated by lots of parking, lots of underutilized parking. And then you have a lot of auto service garages, you have gas stations, car washes, fast food. Um, none of this really creates a sense of soul or a sense of place for the community, which is one of the goals of the general plan. So the vision for the specific plan was to create a number of things. One was to create a variety of different land uses in the area. To create, and that by doing that, you create a sense of vitality and interest. Um, another issue was that we wanted to make people stay. Um, it's a bad thing for a district for you to go to just one spot 
go to that retailer and leave. One of the goals of retailers and communities is to have you go to multiple places. So while you go and you shop, then you stop for a restaurant, and then you stay for a cup of coffee, and you mix three or four trips into one. That's, that helps reduce traffic trips, and it helps create a sense of vitality and interest. Um, so we wanted people to stay, not just within the specific plant, but we wanted people to stay in Temple City. Um, in Temple City, we lose a lot of sales tax revenue. We lose a lot of people to Arcadia, to Pasadena, to Alhambra. And we hear a lot of people say, well, we go to those places to shop and dine. But why can't they stay in our own community? So that was another goal of the specific plan, was to give people a place to stay in Temple City. Um, one other idea was to take these big blocks and break them into smaller pieces. That helps th to make things more walkable. It also takes huge, big buildings and breaks them into smaller pieces that are less scary to people. Um, Temple City also has a lack of play space or parks or recreation. So as we're adding economic um, uh, value to these properties, we also want to make sure that we're getting something out of that and that we get some recreation space in this area. We need to make sure that, uh, that as we add value to these properties that we make sure that we transition appropriately back to the residential neighborhoods. Another goal was to create a neighborhood within this specific plan, uh, to create a sense of pride in this area. Um, instead of taking your friends and your family members to Arcadia or to Pasadena, to keep them in Temple City and show off um, this area. Um, to also stop the leakage and to create a sustainable place. So um, in terms of amount of development, now remember, this is the key piece of the general plan. For the next 35 years, this is the key location of where we expect growth to occur. Um, the expectation is to see an increase of development of about um, from 50 dwelling units up to 1,800, and that's if every single lot developed to its maximum capacity, so it's not likely to get up that high. Um, and to increase commercial square footage, there's right now about 600,000 square feet could get up to about a million square feet. So we divided the specific plan into four different districts. To the north in yellow, up in the residential area there, is the NT zone. That's a neighborhood transition zone, zone specifically created to help us transition. Um, to the north is the CC. To the north of Los Tunis is the CC zone. There we have two large commercial developments. Probably we're not going to see a lot of change there in the next 10 years, so um, we just kind of froze things in place there. On the west is the MUC zone. That's where we would expect to see most of the development. And then on the east side, um, you have the MUB zone. Um, that's, that's a boulevard zone. It's the, um, there you'll see, well, you'll see what the vision is moving forward. So uh, one of the main goals of this specific plan was to infuse this area with new development, to focus growth in this area, but to do it in a way that appropriately transitioned to our residential neighborhoods. So we focus most of the growth in the MUC zone, that's the purple zone. Um, so that would be the highest floor area ratio there at a 2.0 FAR. Uh, and then it steps down as you, as you head to the other side of Rosemead in blue, that would step down to a 1.7 FAR. Uh, and then to the north of Las Tunis, um, it steps down even further to a 0.5 FAR. Uh, accordingly, you would also see the number of stories reduced. So, uh, in the purple zone, you would allow for four to six stories. On the opposite side of Rosemead, you step down to three to four stories. And then on the north side of Las Tunas, down to three stories. And then to even further um, help create some appropriate transitions, we allowed six stories on that west side of Rosemead Boulevard. But we wanted to make sure that, that, that it was as buffered as possible from um, people who are going up and down Rosemead uh, so that it wouldn't um, have a very massive appearance. One of the things we heard through our um, specific plan workshops was that people in Temple City um, saw what Alhambra was doing along Main Street and saw these five-story buildings um, pretty close to the sidewalk and they didn't want that um, massive of a structure so close to the street. So what we did is we said if you're going to have six stories it's got to be 300 feet from Rosemead. Um, and then within that area, you can have up to four stories. Um, so we're trying to push that, that most massive point, the most the intense area, as far from Rosemead as possible. And then it also has to be, that six-story building would have to be at least 100 feet from Broadway on the south and 100 feet from uh, Las Tunas on the north. 
And then on the opposite of side of Rosemead, um, again, we're trying to step down the, the intensity of development. So we allow four stories on both sides of Rosemead, but as you head into the residential zones, um, that then has to step down to three stories, and three stories is what's allowed in the residential zone. So again, we're trying to be considerate uh, to the residential neighborhoods. Also, as part of the specific plan, what we're proposing to do is take that large development site um, where the Kmart is all the way down to the office store and divide it into some additional streets some within the site. Uh, and the idea there is instead of having one big block, which would feel massive, um, is to divide it into some smaller blocks, just as a normal street would be divided into smaller blocks. That gives you smaller buildings and, and it gives you a greater sense uh, or lesser sense of mass. And then we even went for further, not just showing where new streets would be located, but showing um, how the buildings would appear on those streets, and then how the streets should appear. So we're not just talking about a 20-foot wide driveway that services these buildings. We're talking about 10-foot sidewalks, which include a landscaped, um, a landscaped area next to the sidewalk. We're talking about a median in between. We're talking about a lane of traffic in either direction with a parking lane. So really, we want this to feel like a traditional street. It's not just a driveway and a shopping center. And then, as you can see, with the buildings on either side of the street, um, we're making sure that the upper stories of the building are pushed back again so that the building does not feel so massive. So if you're walking down that sidewalk, you might feel like you're only walking by a two or three story building. You don't see the upper stories of the building. Uh, this is exactly what's done um, on First Street in Santa Monica, um, where when you're walking in, in Santa Monica in the downtown, you see one or two stories. You don't know that the building is actually stepped back further, and you're actually walking by a five-story building. So um, and one of the things that I'm also excited about is that on the southern part of the site, what we'd like to do is um, create a street where you have internal parking where the median would normally be. And that would give you a space, that interior median spot where you could have parking would allow you to provide for a public market at night. So how that works is Lancaster Boulevard in Lancaster has a center median. That median allows you to park diagonally during the day. But on Friday nights or Saturday nights when the community wants to have an event, that space which is normally just provided for parking is shut down and the streets shut down and all of a sudden it's activated with booths, um, the, the furniture comes out, um, you could have a public market occur on this site and now Temple City starts to see a heart and a soul come to a city. We now have a place to have a, uh, a market more than uh, a farmer's market. Um, we have a, an event space now that's on site. Uh, and then another key aspect of the plan is to connect the specific plan area to the flood control channel or the eat and wash on the site. And so what we're proposing here is to have an east-west connector that would go from the center of the site and it would be a pedestrian connection um, solely. So this would be a place for people to walk down a 20-foot wide path with two sets, of, um, two sets of two trees on either side and create a, create a nice connection um, for people. One of the things Temple City is lacking is recreation space. So um, one of the things we like to do is to provide some additional investment into the into the Eaton Watch as well so that people could use that as a, as a sort of promenade. So these are some different um, visions and pictures of what we like to see in this specific plan. Uh, from here you can see that what we're proposing is mixed-use development with ground floor retail and restaurants with um, residential above. Um, playground space on site, buildings built around open space, um, a public market on site, improvements to the wash, public art, um, improvements to the street, and so forth. So the, the difficulty here, and I'm sure you can all understand this, is that this site um, uh, on the west side of Rosemead Boulevard has nine different owners. So, and the city does not have any redevelopment power, so we, we cannot go in and purchase the, the, all of these properties and, and sell it to one developer. Um, so we've been working throughout the process with all the property owners. They're all very aware of what's happening, and I'm excited to say that they're all very interested in seeing something happen on the site. Um, the north half of the site, from if you remember where Denny's is on Rosemead, 
all the way to um, Kmart is owned by one property owner. Uh, they are very interested in seeing something move forward. Um, I, I, I'm hopeful that within a year or so that we'll see some plans submitted for that. Um, the southern portion of the slide, site is made up of um, four major property owners. That one will be harder to consolidate. Um, because of this, we have a clear understanding from the beginning that we're going to see, likely see a phased development. This isn't all going to happen at one time. So, um, what you might see is that string of buildings that currently exist would stay, and then maybe um, some additional development occurs on the parking lots over time, and then slowly maybe the corners fill in, and then perhaps as investment continues, you see the existing buildings would start to be demolished and new development would occur on those sites. So that's, that's what we might see and that's what the specific plan is looking for again are mixed use buildings built around um, plazas and open space that can be used by the community. So the plan does include design guidelines important to, to the community and to the staff is the is to make sure that what, it, what is developed is high quality, otherwise people won't want to stay there very long. Um, so we have design guidelines that talk about how the street needs to be designed, um, how uh, circulation is provided, how building massing should occur. Um, there's architectural design guidelines, where parking facilities should be located behind the retail, so that when you're walking down the street, you only see the retail, you don't see cars parked there. It's just not attractive. Um, and then making sure that we have appropriate transitions to the neighborhoods. Um, improved landscaping, uh, even if someone wanted to build just a commercial only facility, they would need to improve the landscaping in the parking lot. Uh, improved open space, improved streetscapes, and even to provide public art, signs, and lighting. So one of the most expensive parts of development, I'm sure you know, is parking. Um, how what the parking regulations are determines often how much money can be made. Um, so we provided for some flexible parking standards in the specific plan already. So we allow for shared parking between uses. We allow for what's called unbundled parking. Unbundled parking means that if the um, if an apartment building comes in and they agree to lease this, the unit separate from the parking spaces, we would give them a, a reduction in parking. And the idea is, is that if you're renting a one bedroom apartment unit, you might not choose to rent two parking spaces. Or if you have a two bedroom unit, you might only choose to rent one parking space. And that usually decreases the demand for parking. Um, we also have standards if people want to use mechanized parking to make the parking more efficient, or even if they wanted to have a, car, a few car sharing spaces, um, that would also provide for some efficiency in parking. Um, so we're excited. The, the City Council uh, did first reading of the ordinance in December. Um, we expect them to do second reading of the ordinance in February. Um, it would, that means that this plan will become effective in March. Um, we've been working with property owners throughout the process. We have um, plans in already for a, a development on the east side of Rosemead. Uh, I've seen some preliminary sketches of another development on the east side of Rosemead. And we know that there's one of the property owners on the west side of Rosemead is also interested. So we're very excited uh, to bring this vision to fruition and hopefully the community is as well. So uh, thank you for your time and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Scott, has any uh, thought been given to utilizing parking underneath Rosemead Boulevard and replace the infrastructure by the developer instead of the city having to redo that to bring it up to standards? Um, I, you, you're Go all the way across the road to the east side with one layer of parking and redo the infrastructure. So putting parking underground under the street? Right, underground under the, the street. The, the difficulty with that is there's a lot of utilities under the street. Um, right. And anytime you put, you know, you, you'd have to remove those utilities or build under the utilities. It would be very difficult. But but if I'm a developer open to and I'm it. able to use that land at no cost, I will rebuild that entire structure. Yeah, it, it would be something to talk about. It's not something I had thought of. Thank you. Yes. Anthony, have you talked about a north-south connection on Rosemead from the 210 to the 10 
that maybe in the, in the middle, connecting those, those two theories, uh, public transportation, a, a metro of some sort? Yeah, there, there um, is one or two bus lines that already serve Rosemead Boulevard. Um, the, the difficulty is Temple City is in a very difficult spot. The state is pushing us to build housing. Um, and we would presumably love to build housing, um, but the state is also at the same time saying housing should be located around public transit. But the metro doesn't provide a high level of transit. So we're kind of in a catch-22. We should provide more housing around transit, but metro hasn't provided a lot of transit. It, it, so the, because- You already have a parking over at the Yes. people not getting the cars and getting the way up there. Yeah. And so um, Metro is the provider of, of um, transit in the county. Um, and so if we invest in development here, uh, we may see more demand for a transit service, and then we could see um, shorter headways uh, along Rosemead Boulevard. That's going to create a lot more traffic. Yes, um, it will create more traffic trips. Any, any amount of development is going to create more traffic trips. That's true. But what the community has decided is that they would rather focus development at an intersection um, and, and have an impact for a few hours a day rather than spread that traffic throughout the community. And, and that, that's a choice that a community can make. It's the choice that Pasadena made when it developed Old Town Pasadena. They said they would be willing to have an economic uh, development strategy that allowed for people to be in Old Town in exchange for having the intersection of Colorado and Fair Oaks run at a LOS of F for a few hours on a Friday. It's just, it's a policy decision that every community can make. I mean, if, but if we plan not to have any more traffic, then we're not gonna build any more housing. Can I just ask you a question? play space, does that include parks or just playground level locations? Um, that remains to be seen. We would love to have dedicated park space on the site, um, but it would have to be some sort of development agreement um, with the developer to see if it would be publicly owned or privately owned. Hi, Scott. Lee Lieber, nice to see you again. Um, I think this is outstanding, and, and organized real estate is 100% behind this. We have such a housing shortage, we need more housing. Um, so I, I think it's great. I think it's great vision. Uh, I think it will bring a lot of pride to Temple City. Uh, I did have a question as to the housing, though. Is it the residential portion of it? Is it uh, condos or is it apartments? The code hasn't specified, and the code doesn't distinguish between the two. So it would depend on what the developer wanted to provide. And I would encourage condos. Certainly, <laughs> certainly. <laughs> Why is this uh, a lot of uh, house in Temple City go to and want this school? Is there a shortage of space in Temple City for for, for this in the court, Temple City? Uh, it's, I, I can't speak to the school district. Um, the, I think the issue there is that there's just school boundary lines that are set up by the school district, and those boundary lines don't match the boundary lines of the city. Um, and so I think uh, sections of Lower, south of Lower Azusa go to Rosemead Boulevard, uh, Rosemead School Districts, and other sections go to El Monte, just because the boundary lines don't line up. Yeah. I think, so, Bob, just really quick, the person next to you had a question. Sure. Go ahead. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, some 30 years ago, there was a park proposed, I think, on Ivar, southern London, in the general plan, if I recall. Uh, That's before my time. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. But I thought that was, was a good idea, but it never came to be. Ivar and London. I'll have to look at that. Thank you. Sir? You mentioned something about four stores and six stores. Once you went above the first story, but the difference maybe between the four and the six. Once you went over over what? Um, I, I think that just goes to people's personal fee feelings and opinion. Um, for some people, walking by a one-story building is is not imposing. Walking by a 20-story building is imposing. And a community has to come together to decide how much is too much. And in Temple City, where we don't have a structure right now that's over three stories in height, proposing something at six stories in height um, would be too much to swallow. 
Um, so that's why we've tried to provide nothing more than four stories near the street and push the higher densities further from the street. We have a shortage of residential. One direct door by condo. Once you went above one story, make, that's making no difference. You get, we, here in California, we look at this, but if you're going out of California, you're going to New York, you're going to the other place, it's, they, they don't, all of the building is a difference. Well, uh, I, I appreciate what you're saying in terms of um, economics and structure and perhaps even design, um, but to, to, the, to community members, who have lived in Temple City since 1960 when it was incorporated and are used to the ranch style houses that are very horizontal and very low, to see a three story building developed is enough to cause them to want to leave. So to have a six story, to, to, to have a 20 story building or a 10 story building um, may set off a revolution. Um, um, at least in my personal life it would. Um, so we have to be sensitive um, both to the community but also to, to overwhelming um, state economic issues. So we're, those are the things we're trying to balance. You send them to New York, you don't really can see the structure there. Um, we have a question on Facebook. Um, they're asking about incentives to the developers for the green belts and getting these structures that you're suggesting. What kind of incentives do they have, if any? So um, one of the things we tried to do from the start was to um, build the incentives into the development. So um, recognizing that right now what would only be built on site is a 0.5 FAR with one or two stories in height, um, the city feels that we've already created a lot of economic interest and incentive on the site by allowing you to build up to a six story building and then increasing the FAR from a 0.5 to a 2.0. So by that we feel that we have created a lot of economic value already. Um, with that economic value, now we're expecting people, the developers, to bring some community benefits as well. I think that's all we have time for. Great, thank you.